Hello and welcome to an Orbiter 2016 video series. This is part two of our rescue flight. Let's go ahead and jump right in right where we left off. What we need to do now is we've established an interception point and aligned our orbital plane. So now we need to synchronize the orbit. We'll pull up the sync MFD. Target the fuel service station. And let's see. All right, let's uh, increase our list length. Okay, uh, let's see, 19 orbits in the future. We're arriving a little behind um, fuel service station, so we would need to speed up. However, I'm not willing to lower our periapsis altitude below much where it is now. So we're just gonna let time pass. And we'll time accelerate here. And we're tell you what actually of course I need to set this to our apoapsis I forgot to set our reference axis to apoapsis it's still the same though we're arriving um, actually it's pretty close right now so I think this orbit would all do I'll go ahead and coast around to the uh, reference axis here to our interception point and uh, we'll bring the time of arrival difference down to zero so it looks like, let's see, as we're approaching, okay, we're arriving a little behind. So we would need to speed up just a little bit. So that would mean we'd have to lower our orbit altitude, but it shouldn't take very much. So we should be okay. Our periapsis is 217. I don't like to take it much below 200, never below 150, or else we will experience orbital decay. So let's go ahead and orient the vessel retrograde. All right, we're going to coast up to the interception point here. Okay, so we're over the interception point. Let's do a small little translation, translation burn here and bring that time of arrival difference down to zero. All right, that's good enough. Again, it's not going to stay on zero. We have non-spherical gravity sources on. Periapsis is safely above 200 kilometers, so we're good to go. Um, so yes, we are set to rendezvous in 17 orbits in the future here, so let's time accelerate. So that's a lot of coasting around, so we will just um, go to a thousand times. And what I will do is uh, coast around to around three, maybe two orbits to intercept. We'll do a small orbital plane change adjustment if we need to. And then we will do a final course correction for our timing on the sync MFD on the final orbit before rendezvous. So let's see. Yeah, we're looking good. It's uh, actually not too bad. Actually, it's not the time of arrival difference isn't getting too bad out of control. And actually the relative inclination is staying lower than I expected. So we'll just monitor that. All right, we're getting a little closer here. I probably will go ahead and adjust the relative inclination just to make sure that that's covered as low as it can be anyway. All right, we'll wait until two orbits to go. Or I guess we'll wait until actually three when we're looking two orbits into the future. So after this orbit, Okay, let's pull up the Align Plane MFD. Alright, so we need to coast around to the descending node. That's the next node crossing. Uh, that's probably low enough. We could adjust that with the uh, linear RCS. Um, but I'll tell you what, I'll just go ahead and... Just go ahead and orient the vessel, orbit normal, and use the main engines. It will not take very much, so we'll have to be careful. Let's approach the node. Alright, here we go. Burning. Okay, good. Now, of course, we will have to make a 
course correction since we did that plane alignment there. Let's uh, orient prograde and we will coast around two more times. So when we're one orbit away from rendezvous, we will do a course correction at the reference axis. All right, so this orbit, let's see what's going on. So it looks like we're getting there a little behind ISS. So we need to do a bit of a retrograde burn in order to speed up a bit. All right, we'll just use our linear RCS for that. The time of arrival difference is only off by 14 seconds, so it won't take very much at all. Let's go ahead and orient the vessel prograde. And let's get right over our interception point here. Linear RCS is activated. So we will have to uh, translate back since we're oriented to prograde, because we need to do a retrograde burn. Okay, we're over the interception point right now. Translating back, and we'll get that time of arrival difference there on zero. Maybe should have used the retro engines, but this is getting the job done. Oh, you know what? I think... Do I have time slowed down? No, I don't. Okay. Almost there. There we go. Okay. So let's coast around on this final orbit to rendezvous. Let's go ahead and set our transponder frequencies and then call nav. So 117.65. Oop, okay. Right? No, sorry. Of course, we have to select vessel. So 130.45. Uh, 130.50 right there. Uh, let's see. Okay, there we go. And let's set this one to one of the docking ports. We'll just pick the first one there. So it's 108.05. Maybe I should have went the other way. 108.45. Dang it. There we go. 108.05. Check. Okay. We're done with that. All right. So let's go back to our sync MFD. All right. We'll time accelerate until we get a little closer. All right. So we're 30 kilometers out. Let's go ahead and open the docking MFD. And we'll press HUD. So there it is right there. You can already see it, actually. All right, I'll tell you what. Um, our closure velocity... I think we can use our retro engines for this. Let's see, what do we have? Uh, let's go burn time. We have to close a DV. It, this is climbing, so let's just, for right now, let's call it 50. DV of 50, so what is that? Distance... 55 meters. Oh, wait a minute. We're gonna, we need to switch to retro doors. Let's open our retro doors. APU on. Retro doors are opening. Okay, APU off. Alright, so 259 meters is the distance we would have to begin our braking maneuver using the retro engines in order to cancel out this closure velocity. Um, okay, so we're not in danger of hitting. Uh, we're actually going to miss it by a bit here, just because our orbit was perturbed, so we're not too worried about that. Um, let's see, where are we now? Sync MFD. So we're not quite to the interception point, so I'm going to monitor our closure velocity. If our closure velocity gets down to zero and uh, goes to a negative number, so we're no, no longer closing, on the fuel service station, then I'll go ahead and do my braking maneuver. If that happens before we reach the interception point, rather, then I'll go ahead and do my braking maneuver. All right, uh, let's see here. Rotation. Let's rotate over here. Translation. If I can move that over there.
Yeah, so what I'm doing is I'm using linear RCS and I'm translating over to the right to bring our velocity vector closer to uh, the fuel service station and you'll notice that's actually bringing the time of arrival difference down. Okay. Let's get a little closer here. I'm not really worried about time of arrival difference anymore. Right now I'm just trying to get our velocity vector closer past there. Okay, that's good enough. All right, so let's put in DV55. So distance 313 meters. So we would need 313 meters to cancel out this closure velocity. We're not going to wait that closely to do it. We'll get about one kilometer away and go ahead and break. Rotation. So let's rotate over. Let's orient the vessel so we're facing that velocity vector. And we'll speed time up. Okay. Go to 10x. And we'll get ready to break here in a moment. Translation. So let's go ahead and get ready to break. Let's go ahead and switch over to the docking port at HUD. Okay, so you need to come in from the bottom there. We'll do our braking first. So when we're about one kilometer out, I'll go ahead and break. Okay, let's go ahead and break because we don't need to go all the way to the FSSB. We need to move down into the docking corridor. Translation. Okay, so let's move this down here. Rotation. All right, so let's see, where are we now? Actually, we needed to go the other way, but I'll tell you what, we'll just go ahead and translate down here into the docking corridor, and then we'll worry about getting all lined up with the docking port there. All right, let me go ahead and let's open our nose cone. And since it's gonna get dark too, let's go ahead and turn the nav lights on. So we'll have some docking lights. Okay, nose cone is opening. Translation. All right, let's translate forward into that docking corridor. Okay, nose cone is open. We'll turn off the APU now. Definitely wouldn't want to crash into that. That would not be a good thing. Looks like it's got a lot of fuel on board there. Take a look outside. Nice view as the sun's going down there. Okay, let me time accelerate. Yep, 
getting dark. Alright, so we're gonna have a nighttime docking here. Translation. So I'm just breaking a little bit and we will roll over and uh, y'all over to the right face the uh, space space station there, the fuel service station Rotation. and roll over so we're oriented the correct way for the docking port. There it is. Looking ominous against the blackness of space. Translation. Rotation. Alrighty. Tell you what, I'm going to go to the glass cockpit. Translation. Let's close on the docking port there and move down into the docking corridor. Rotation. Translation. Rotation. I think <clears throat> I think the fuel service station there has a little angular velocity. Let's use remote vessel control. Um, I, you know, I'm not even sure if it has fuel on board for maneuvering or not. Um, let's hit kill rotation and see if that helps. Rotation. Just want to kill out the, the rotational angular velocity, I guess, that it has. Yeah, I don't think that's helping any. It's going to be challenging to dock. You can see how quickly our rotational alignment slips off there. Alright, so we'll get a little closer. We'll do a last minute docking check here. Rotation. Yeah, I don't think that I don't think that helped at all. Right, one more time. Translation. I think our lights are just beginning to reflect off of the uh, docking port there. That's always cool actually at night. Yeah, I don't think this did anything. We'll close that. Alright, last minute docking check. Let's see, nose cone is opened. Lights are on. Yep, we're good. Okay. Rotation. We're badly aligned here. We get on top of things. We'll bring it in, and we need to fill up the XR2 completely. Because we're going to need every drop of fuel to complete this mission. Rotation. Let's go back to the glass cockpit. A little easier to see the docking MFD there. Translation. One hundred. So we're a hundred meters away from the docking port. Seventy-five. 
Rotation. We're relatively lined up. I need to fix rotational alignment there. Translation. 50. Rotational alignment's not perfect, but I'll fix that when we get a little closer. Fix that rotational rotation alignment there. Eight. Translation. All right, that looks pretty good. It's definitely not going to stay there. Translation. Six. Rotation. Boy, that rotational alignment really is slipping off quickly. This is, uh, this is more challenging than I expected. Five. Off. Rotation. Nope, don't turn that off. Translation. Four. Off. No. Rotation. Dang. Rotation. Three. Translation. Rotation. Translation. Off. Rotation. Translation. Rotation. Translation. All right. Two. Rotation. Off. Rotation. Translation. All right. This is definitely not going to be a perfect docking here. This is really hard. Rotation. Translation. Rotation. One. Translation. Rotation. Translation. Contact. All right, there we go. Not terrible, but not great either. But we have made it. We've docked with the uh, fuel service station. Uh, looks like we're just over 20 minutes, so we will go ahead and proceed with refueling. And then we'll wrap this part up there. Alright, so what I'm going to do is... Let's move down. First of all, let's uh, put the vessel in docking state here. Um, let's go ahead and close the retro doors. We can stow the radiator and we'll use external Using cooling. External O2. Okay, and let's external see. We don't need nav lights on. Strobe off. We'll leave beacon on. Radiator's almost stowed. APU can go off. HUD off. Okay, so we're in nice stored state here for docking. All right. So what I want to do now is open the fuel hatch. And let's see here. Refueling systems online. All right, so now that I have the fuel hatch open, what I'm going to do is go ahead and fill up the main tank and the RCS. So we'll flip that main switch there. Crossfeed 
crossfeed over to RCS, top that off. That'll turn off automatically once that's full. Okay, RCS tanks are full. We can't, uh, we're not going to fill APU, actually. We, we could, but we don't need to anyways. Um, LOX is lower than I anticipated, I guess, because it took a while to synchronize, but we should be okay. We should, we should have enough to get there and get back. Might be a little close, but uh, it'll be a challenge. All right, so I will time accelerate. This is going to take a little bit to fill up all those tanks. Top everything off. We're going to need every little bit. Okay, one tank is full. Bay tank number two is full. Alright, there we go. We're completely filled up. Let's close the fuel hatch. Okay, so this is where I'm going to leave this part. Uh, so the next, next part we'll go ahead and pick up right where we left off here. I really appreciate you guys watching. Be sure to subscribe for updates and uh, watch for the coming parts in this series. Let me know what you think about the series. And, uh, you know, thanks for watching. As always, guys, take care, and we'll see you in the next video.